Hi guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to learn about how to determine equilibrium GDP using aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And later, we're going to see what happens when one of these curves change. Okay? Right. So now here, as you can see, there's a table that shows a list of all of the uh, aggregate demand or real output demanded as well as aggregate supply or real output supplied. Okay, so here are the list of price levels okay, that corresponds to each of these aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Okay, as you can see, there will be one point at which both the aggregate demand and aggregate supply equals. Okay, so this is basically our equilibrium price level and these are our equilibrium GDP levels. So to put it into the diagram, you can see here. So this is the aggregate demand, aggregate supply. So this is the point of intersection at price 100 and GDP level 510. Okay, so when aggregate demand equals to aggregate supply, we basically have an equilibrium GDP, right? Okay, so now when any one of these changes, there will be changes to the equilibrium GDP as well. So what are the changes involved? Aggregate demand can either increase or decrease. Likewise, aggregate supply can also, they, it can also either increase or decrease. Now, when any one of these changes happen, equilibrium GDP will also change. Okay, so there are basically four instances when this happens, so we're going to look at it one by one. Let's take a look at the first instance. Okay, so we're going to look at changes in aggregate demand first. So there are two changes. So we're going to look at the first case, which is an increase. Increase in aggregate demand. Okay, you may have recalled from the previous topic when aggregate demand increases, it's basically a demand pull inflation. Okay, so I hope you can recall back this topic. Okay, so now let's start to sketch our initial condition. So this would be our real GDP or output. And here's our price level. Okay, so initially we have aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Okay, this is AD1. Okay, so since we're assuming there's a change in aggregate demand, there's no change in AS, so it's a um, Cetrus Paribus, so we leave it as it is. Okay, so here would be the intersection point. All right, so this is P1. And here, let's assume this is the full employment level. Okay, initially this is full employment level. All right, see we have demand pull inflation. Okay, the thing is, you know why this has to be QF? Because if this was some other um, output level, okay, it will not be a demand pull inflation. It's actually quite a good thing if you have an increase in demand. But because here the economy has already reached the full employment level, that is why any changes or any increase in aggregate demand, it will be a demand pull inflation. Okay, so let's sketch the demand pull inflation. Now the aggregate demand is shifted to the right. Okay, now... At the beginning, when there's no change in price, if there's no change in price, you can see that the output expands, okay, quite a bit until here, okay, quite a bit. Okay, why is it such a big expansion? Remember the multiplier effect? Okay, at first, the aggregate demand changes. Maybe one aspect of the, one component of the aggregate spending increases, and then due to the multiplier effect, there'll be this full effect uh, change in GDP. Okay. However, we know that this is demand pull inflation. Inflation reduces the effect of multiply effect. Okay, so what happens is price will not be stable at P1. The price will be increased. Okay? Hence, that's why it's called an inflation. When we have an increase here, we will actually have a higher price at P2. So this is basically what it means by a demand pull inflation. So as you can see here, we actually have a, um, a new equilibrium quantity which is Q1. So basically, it's not Q2 because otherwise, if there's no inflation, of course, it will be expanded up to Q2. But because we have inflation, so inflation reduces the effect of the multiple effect. So the final um, equilibrium would be at Q1. Okay? So here, this difference here is actually a positive, positive GDP gap. Okay, now let's take a look at the second case where... There's a decrease in aggregate demand. Now, guys, if you remember um, the business cycle topic, when there's a fall in output, fall in GDP, fall in income, it's basically a case of recession. Okay? 
So when we have a recession, usually it's accompanied by cyclical unemployment. Okay, so we're going to put it here together. Okay, so now let's sketch this situation. Okay, so initially here's our real GDP. Here's our price. Okay, so initially we will have a D1 and aggregate supply. Oops, okay, here's our intersection point. So this is our P1 and QF, just like before. Okay, we start at the full employment GDP level. See, now we have a recession happening. Okay, recession meaning there's a fall in aggregate demand. So what does it mean by a fall in aggregate demand? AD curve will shift to the left. Okay, so I'm going to sketch here. AD curve, shift to the left. Now, here you would see that, okay, say if the price level maintains at P1, we will have a very large amount of negative GDP gap, right? See? Because QF is the optimal output, so anything below that would be a fall, below optimal. So this is a negative GDP gap, all right, here. This is Q1, okay? Right, so we would have thought that, you know, just like the previous case, the price would fall, right? So we thought that, okay, hey, we'll have a new price level. So basically, the GDP gap wouldn't, wouldn't be that bad. It would be here. Okay, so that's where um, we need to make that correction. Here, price will not fall, guys. Okay, price will not fall to P2. In fact, the price will maintain, will remain at P1. This is due to the ratchet effect. Okay, I want you guys to read this. It's in the textbook. Ratchet effect. What it means is prices are sticky downwards. Okay, it's easy for the price to go up, just like in the previous case just now, but it's very hard in practice for prices to go down. Okay, so in this case, although we have a fall in AD, prices maintain at P1. Okay, so what's the case here? Prices maintain, therefore we will have a huge negative GDP gap. So this is the new equilibrium. This was our old equilibrium, this is our new equilibrium. So there are several reasons as to why the ratchet effect or prices sticky downwards happen. Um, okay, one popular reason is due to wage contracts. Okay, normally when we enter employment, our wage is specified right in a particular um, contract. So although there are changes in price levels, our wages remain the same. Okay. Uh, besides that, is also the minimum wage regulation. Minimum wage meaning that's the minimum that the company is uh, willing to offer. So it will not go any lower because you know. We want to protect the welfare of the workers, right? We don't want their their wages to be too low, okay? So that's the point. That's why the prices are sticky downwards. Um, there's also the uh, effect of uh, morale, okay? So we don't really want prices to go down because although it's good in the sense that we're paying lesser, but again, prices here also reflect wages. So if wages are brought down, it will affect them negatively in terms of productivity and morale. Okay, so please do read more on the ratchet effect so that you can understand better. Okay, so just now we've looked at the two cases of shifting in the aggregate demand curve. Now let's look at shifts in the aggregate supply curve. Okay, just like before, there are two cases. Number one is when the aggregate supply curve um, increases. Oops, sorry. Increases in aggregate supply okay so this case is normally called the full employment case okay so I'm gonna put it here full employment case now let's start with sketching our initial condition so here's our real GDP price level okay so initially as usual we have our aggregate demand and aggregate supply okay now as you can see I'm putting a subscript here because we're gonna show it change later okay so here we'll have the initial price and here is q1 okay see i didn't put as qf because this economy we have not yet reached the full employment level that's what we're going to show later to achieve full employment level okay so now let's see what happens is let's say there's an increase in aggregate demand okay there's an increase in aggregate demand uh, therefore, there's a um, faster uh, aggregate demand increases very fast, maybe perhaps due to a change in taste, change in preferences, change in income, whatever. Okay, so let's sketch. There's a change in aggregate demand. So what do we see here? We can see that, oh, okay, there'll be some sort of 
price increase here okay price increases okay and then we will have output increase as well to q2 okay as you can see when there's an increase in price we will have a, a movement upwards along the original uh, you get supply curve because we see that higher prices reflect high profitability right so firms will have more motivation to produce okay now as we can see when we have higher and more um, GDP being produced uh, what happens here is in the long run um, this higher productivity will cause average cost to fall at each level of GDP okay so what happens when average cost fall guys okay please refer to the previous uh, video we know that when average cost fall okay what it means is producers will have more you know incentive to produce more in that sense because average cost is a determinant or productivity is a determinant of aggregate supply so what happens now is the aggregate supply curve will now shift to the right okay so we're gonna shift it to the right okay so what happens here can you see we have a new equilibrium okay we will have not only more output okay but prices wouldn't be as high as before just now it's high but the final resting price would be here so it's as if it goes up and then it rests back down it's like a u-turn and here we'll have quite a bit of higher output so here we can see we have stronger growth okay so this is what it means by we have full employment happening okay so maybe here um, it could be QF you can put it as QF maybe full employment, or it's not yet QF but it's approaching full employment level okay so this is what it means by when there's an increase in aggregate supply Okay, and finally, let's look at the case when there's a decrease or a fall in aggregate supply. Uh, now, if you remember the topic, um, I believe in topic four, when we talk about a fall in aggregate supply, this is basically a condition called the cost push inflation. Okay, now let's sketch our... Um, diagram so again as always this is real GDP price level okay, initially this is our AD AS okay so initially this is our P1 and this is okay say this is the full employment level okay we're at the full employment level say for whatever reason there's a fall in aggregate um, supply okay there's a fall so what happened here is AS will shift to the left okay AS shift to the left right as you can see here we've got a new price okay this increase in price reflects cost push inflation okay remember cost push inflation happens when the per unit um, production cost increases okay that thereby forcing aggregate supply curve to fall okay and what happened here we also have a fall in output so the effect here is we have a cost push inflation and we also have a negative GDP gap. And normally when this happens, it is accompanied by higher unemployment as well.